<clears throat> Father, thank you so much, Lord, for all your blessings. We thank you, Father, for the the break in between. And Father, we pray, Lord, for your blessing upon our service this afternoon. Father, I pray for the filling of your spirit. I can't do this without you. I mean that all my heart. And I pray, Father, that you bless in a great way. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Notice, if you would, verse 1 of chapter 9. Uh, Am I an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ, our Lord? Are, are not we, uh, ye my patent work in the ministry? I'm sorry. Are ye not my work in the Lord? Uh, if, if I be an, an apostle uh, unto you, yet doubtless are I am to you, for the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. Mine answer to them that uh, do examine, uh, examine me in this, have we not power to eat and to drink? Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as the other apostles, and uh, as the brethren of the Lord in Cephas? Verse 6, or am I, uh, or I am only, and Barnabas have not we power to forbear working? Uh, verse 7, uh, who goes to warfare any time uh, on his own charges? Who plant the vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth a flock and eateth not the milk of the flock? Uh, say I these things as a man, or say not the law the same thing? Verse 9, for it is written in the law of Moses, uh, thou shalt not uh, muzzle the ox, uh, excuse me, the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Does God take care for the oxen? Or say, or saith he uh, altogether for our sakes, for our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that you, he may, he that ploweth uh, should plow in hope, and uh, that he that thresheth in hope should be partakers of his hope. Verse 11, if we have sown unto you spiritual things, but uh, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? If, if others be partakers of this power over you, are you not rather? Um, nevertheless, we have not, uh, we have not used this power, but uh, suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Uh, do, do not ye know that which minister about holy things live in the things of the temple? And they that wait on the altar are partakers with the altar. Even so hath the Lord ordained that uh, they that preach the gospel should live in the gospel. Verse 15, but if I have used none of these things, neither have written these things, that it should be so uh, done unto me, uh, for it were better for me to die than that, uh, that uh, any man should make my glory in void. Thank you, may be seated. So we, we see, uh, we must remember that Paul is writing uh, the new, in the New Testament church of Corinth. He is, uh, we're studying these verses that we must uh, keep everything in context. So chapter 8 uh, is connected in a powerful way to chapter 9. Chapter 8, Paul taught the church the importance of brotherly love and Christian liberty. And that's very important. Look, you know, there was a time in our country that people just said, you know, you, you can't buy a foreign car. I, I understand the politics and people say you got to buy American and all that. But, you know, there's liberty. If God wants you to own a Toyota... Own a Toyota. God, if you're praying and God wants you to uh, have a, a, you know, um, what's, what's a fancy car? Mercedes. A Mercedes from Germany? Drive Mercedes. I mean, it's, 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 these, these ideas that we have to get in a box as Christians is wrong. There's Christian liberty. And God may lead you to do one thing and uh, someone else another thing. But liberty is, is uh, taught not a license to sin, but the power to live right and to love right. Listen to Galatians 5, verse 13 and 14. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, 
but to love and serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, and verse 12. But take heed, lest by any means uh, this liberty of yours become a stomach block to them that are weak. But when, when uh, you sin, so uh, against the brethren, and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. So the apostle simply was trying to state that when we offend a brother or sister, our rights end. Now, this is very important. This is very important. You can be in a church and be offended all day long. But if you are, you're not a Christian. Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing Amen. shall offend them. Amen. Right? And uh, you, you can say all you want that you know you're offended and offended this person, offended that family, this thing. Then I I want to say this in all sincerity. Don't don't be offended. Move on. I mean that. Move on. Why stay here and live an offended life? <laughs> but I'm going to say anything about that. Outside of, you know, you're a heathen if you live that way. See, we're to live in love. Amen. Peace. We're not to be offended all the time. Jesus said offenses will come. Now, the apostle simply states that, that when we offend a brother or sister, our rights end. And Paul proves the truth in chapter 8 by the practice in chapter 9. And uh, in chapter 9, it can be broken down into three sections, which is going to take one, Paul states, uh, his rights. And uh, we find in uh, chapter uh, 1, uh, chapter, I'm sorry, Chapter 9, verse 1, Paul states his rights as an apostle. Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Uh, are not ye uh, my work in the Lord? So these questions uh, on whether the Paul was an apostle was very important. He said he was. In Romans chapter 1, verse 1, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle separated unto the gospel of God. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 1, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and the God the Father who raised him from the dead. So uh, we must be, be called into the ministry of God, and the ministry is not something that we put ourselves into. Rather, uh, God places uh, the call uh, into the ministry. So again, uh, you know, I, don't, I didn't place myself in the ministry. I, I, I wasn't qualified I, when, I, when I think of myself. I was far from, you know, being a, a, a God-called man. But God prepared me. God worked in my life. I, I really believe, you know, for the first 10 years of my Christian life, I was on the chasing hand of God. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm laughing at it now, cause, but I wasn't laughing then. Uh, but it was, it was difficult. But there were so many things I had to straighten out in my life. In F Acts chapter 9, verse 15, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So Paul had a specific calling, not only as a preacher, but as an apostle. And in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 7 and 10, the Bible speaks of Peter and James uh, and John recognized Paul as an apostle. So the other apostle recognized him as an apostle. And then we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 1, where Paul asked, am I not an apostle? Uh, am I not free? And Paul was free to exercise his rights as an apostle and free to exercise his rights. Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? So in Acts chapter 9, verse 22 and 18, Paul testifies of seeing the Lord Jesus Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 to 6, 
Paul speaks of uh, Paul speaks of a visit to heaven and communion with the Lord. And that was a, 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 a miracle that God did that for Paul. He said, I'm not, a, I'm not permitted to speak the things I saw. Uh, but he said, praise the Lord, I saw them. So he goes on and says, am I not, uh, are you not my work in the Lord? Now, Corinth was a proof of the, the, uh, the, uh, So Ashley types my notes. I don't know what in the world she put in here. Corinth was the proof. Galatians chapter 6, verse 4. But let every man prove his own work. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. Do the work of evangelists. <laughs> You look good and red. Anyway, a preacher must be able to do the work the Lord had called him to do and primarily reach people with the gospel, baptize them, and then teach them or disciple them. And the Bible teaches that in verse 2, if I be not apostle uh, unto others, yet doubtless I am to you, for the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. So <clears throat> Paul is saying that he, he proved his qualifications as an apostle, and God did a great work uh, in the church and in Paul's life. Now notice 2 Corinthians, uh, I'll just quote it, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, truly the signs of the apostle were, the, were wrought among you in, my, in all my patience and signs, wonders, and mighty deeds. Now verse 3 Paul states, my answer to them that do examine me is this. So Paul has answers for them. He says uh, uh, there are different rights one can have, birth rights, natural rights, uh, presumptuous rights, unal uh, inalienable rights, divine rights, rights or, or privileges from God. And divine right was that which Paul was uh, uh, teaching about embarking on in this, this portion of Scripture. And some do not like the subject I'm about to delve in, but this is pure Scripture. The average church member might have a wrong philosophy concerning the providing for a pastor, but we must, not, we must base everything on the Bible. And I'm doing this for, for three reasons this afternoon. I'm not always going to be here. So where are you going? <laughs> Well, one day I'm going to have to retire. And um, the, the teaching here is in our text. Second of all, it's for your benefit. You know, uh, I may leave. I may, you know, retire one day. And then, uh, but be for your benefit, how to take care of the man of God. And when a church who's uh, is going to tra uh, transfer into another pastor, uh, I think it's that right. Uh, they, they have, it's, it's so important that a pastor knows that you know your Bible. Very important. That, oh, Long and Baptist, they know their Bible. Very important. And then, as for the future of our work, you know, I'll not always be here. I, I, I would be derelict in my duty if I did not instruct you on the whole counsel of God. So, notice verse 4, if you would. We have not power to eat, have we not power to eat and drink? So Paul states the right to be supported by his church and the church at Corinth, and he would uh, uh, purchase physical needs. So that's, you know, I'm no different than any other man. You know, there's things uh, I, I need, there's things I'm going to take care of my family with, and so on. And verse 5 and 6 the Bible teaches Paul states that he had a right to a family in the case that the sport should take care of them also. And Paul reminds the church of the other epistles, such as uh, Paul's brethren and Peter himself. Verse 6, notice he says, Or I uh, only and Barnabas have we not power to, to uh, forbear working? So Paul and Barnabas ha have uh, such 
a, a, just as much a right to have their livelihood from the ministry. Now, a lot of people disagree with this. So I would say this, the Bible teaches clearly here that you're to eat and, and live by the ministry. So he speaks about an ox, he speaks about a vineyard, he speaks about, um, there's no example in here, uh, be a partaker of their hope. And so, uh, you know, he, he's speaking here about the ministry. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17 to 18, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Now, I'm not bragging about myself. And I didn't prepare in life for this. But our church is really a peaceful church. And we're hard-nosed. <laughs> you know, what we believe, we believe. And it's not wishy-washy. It's not like you believe whatever you want to believe, you know. It's not like that. We're Baptist. We're Bible-believing Baptist. And we believe in the, the, the salvation by grace. We believe in local church. We believe in living holy. We believe in a separated life. We believe in, uh, you know, unity. People getting along one another. Very important. Amen. And, uh, you know, so it's not like we're wishy-washy. And uh, Paul goes on and says that the, the elder that rules well be counted worthy of double honor. In other words, there's a value, a price paid, a gift of money. Now, people get nervous when preachers don't speak about money. I don't. And I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm not covet, covetous about money. We have a good offering, praise the Lord. We don't have a good offering, praise the Lord. So especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. And for the scripture saith, thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the labor is worthy of his reward. So this is what the Bible teaches. And uh, I, I try to cover the whole counsel of God. I'm not an Old Testament scholar. I do go in the Old Testament, especially around the Bible. But I'm New Testament. I, I live there, man. And I love it. But um, Galatians 6.6, 6, let him that is taught in the word communicate, that means partake, unto him that teaches uh, in all good things. In other words, one thing, uh, uh, the, the one teaching the word ought to be taken care of is the people ought to be taught. And the uh, Bible says in Philippians 4, 14, notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. So the communicate is a word about giving. It's about communicating. It's about helping. And Matthew chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, before, before the apostle was sent out to preach the gospel, the Lord instruct them, for the workman is worthy of his, of his meat. So, uh, look, I've said that, I've quoted that many times. Guys who come over and did work in my house, and, and uh, you know, I said, well, a workman's worth of his hire. And I mean that with all my heart. If you, uh, if you need to be paid or want to be paid, I have no problem with that. You know, I appreciate you doing it. And uh, so the, 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 the thought here is the society understands this. Notice 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 7. Who go to warfare any time at his own charges? Makes sense, right? Uh, who plant the vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth the flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Say are these things as a man, or say not the law the same also. So it's not only me saying it, but the law says it. The word of God says it. And it's, it's right for a, a, a soldier to be uh, recompensed uh, and be paid for the work that he does. He's not to fight in a day and have to work at night to meet his basic, basic needs. And the soldier serves uh, at his country's expense. And I did. I did four years, and I served my country well. A pastor is a soldier. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. A farmer partakes of his labors. Uh, he does not sow the seed 
and grow the crops without being a partaker of being paid for it. So, you know, that's just common sense. A preaches to sow good seed. In 1 Corinthians 3, verse 6, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. In 2 Timothy 6, 6, the husbandmen that laboreth must first be partakers of the fruit. And then the Bible goes on and says in, in 1 Peter 5, verse 2, the pastor described as a shepherd. And then all these types of workers are reimbursed for their labor. If, if the right uh, and expected things are these labors, why wouldn't the right for God's work as well? So it's very important that we get paid. And I, I'm not, I'm, I'm paid very well here. I'm not complaining. I'm trying to instruct our church on how to deal with the next pastor. And the Bible teaches, um, again, uh, you know, the scriptures teach this. Notice 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. Say I these things that a man, or say uh, not the law also, the same also. For it's written in the law of Moses, thou shalt not muzzle the ox, uh, mouth of the ox, uh, that treadeth out the corn, that God take care for the oxen. Or saith he, uh, it altogether for our sakes. For our sakes, no doubt, this is written that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and he that thresheth in hope should be partakers of this hope. So again, it's common sense that a preacher gets paid. And what does God say in the word? Double honor. If he's going to uh, rule uh, uh, in, with the word and doctrine, he should pay, pay double honor. And uh, again, here Paul is promoting uh, not animal rights or the oxen as our brother, but he's saying that God takes care of his creation. <laughs> Amen? <clears throat> the oxen's not my brother. Do you get that? The chicken's not my sister. Right? The kitten, the dog, the, they're not my friend. We all with us? Amen. All right. Sorry about that, Lorraine. But anyway, Job 38 and verse 41, who provided for the raven his food? Psalm 147, verse 9, he giveth the, to the, the beast his food and to the young raven which uh, cry. So these insignificant birds, and they are insignificant, no names, no families, just a common bird. Notice in Matthew 6, verse 26, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. So all the money you spend on feeders and seeds, not necessary. God's going to feed them. He's going to take care of them. I don't know where I'd be. If I went for me feeding the squirrels, and the birds, and put them in, you know, all the, all the gadgets and junk they, they, I'm sorry, they said junk, they sell to feed the birds and so on. God's going to take care of them. The, you know, you don't see birds, their hands in the pockets and saying that, you know, it's miserable out here, it's hard to get work, it's, uh, you know, difficult. You know, I, I always think in this cartoon, the birds <laughs> smoking the cigar, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Tom and Jerry, something I just saw recent. I didn't say that. Anyway, um, you know, the, the, the birds going to take care of them. And God's going to take care of them. So God cares for people far more than animals. And God is concerned for the care of the ox or the bird. How much more does God care about his servant, the preacher? In 1 Timothy 5, 18, for the scriptures say, thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his hire. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 12, 13, and we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are uh, over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. So the Bible tells us here, 
He's beseeching the brethren to know them that labor among them. That's me. Again, it's your responsibility to know me. Get to know your preacher. My wife and I, we try to have people over and invest in them and talk to them and get to know them. But, you know, it's so important that you know them and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. And see, that's what, what's so important here. What's a preacher known for? Oh, he, he has a hospital ministry. He goes to visit the elderly in the nursing home. So on. No, it's preaching the word of God. That's, that's what the Bible says, preaching. Now, there's nothing wrong with those other things. I've done them. But it's so important that you, uh, you think of them very highly, esteem them very highly for their, uh, and, and love for their work's sake. And I'm not looking to be worshipped. I am looking for people to love me for what I do. I wish you all loved me. <laughs> all right. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. <clears throat> Let's take a look there. And the Bible says, or, or saith he that all together for our, our saints, for, for our sakes, no doubt, this is written that he that ploweth uh, should plow in hope, he that thresheth, and the hope should be partaker of the hope. So again, the, the plowing, then the threshing. And Paul did the plowing. The pastor uh, uh, was doing the threshing. In verse 11, the Bible says, If we have sown unto you spiritual things, it's great if we reap your carnal things. So the Bible says that, and we, we don't argue with the scriptures. Uh, this is a great sin in, by church people. Their attitude towards their, their providing for the pastor is the attitude towards God. And I mean that with all my heart. I've seen it. I've been around for a while. And I say this with all sincerity. You know, you, you've got to take care of your pastor the way God says to. And I'm not complaining. Our church takes very good care of me. I get double honor, which I'm thankful for, and it's a scriptural church, but God has blessed our church. You know, our finances are very good, things are going well, and they're only going to get better. Notice verse 12, the church had supported other missionaries, and they had supported Paul. Uh, so they should have supported Paul. So why didn't they? Because the church was not thinking. Notice verse 12, if others be partakers of this power over you, are you not, are you not, are we, I'm sorry, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. So why didn't the church take care of Paul? They should have. I mean, to me, it was just common sense, and, uh, but they didn't. And uh, the, the key here. The church wasn't thinking. And I want to say this to you uh, as a church body. I, I really believe the more we think, the more we'll be thankful. And it's so important to think. Lots of times we just go through the day just trying to take care, put out fires and solve these things and talk about this and you know all these different things. But you know, we, we don't take time to think. If you think you'll be thankful. That's so important. Now, I'm not saying you, everyone's like that, but there are a lot of people like that, even in our church. And it's so important that we think, and uh, think, first of all, about God, and that should lead us to thanking God. Think about Jesus Christ, and it should lead us to thanking Jesus Christ. Uh, think about, you know, the work that goes on in our church, Service after service after service. It should cause us to thank. You follow what I'm saying? And so I think it's important that we understand this. 
and thoughtfulness towards others, considering the work, being grateful, thankful for them, having an attitude of gratitude is so important. Now notice chapter 9 of 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and we pick up here in verse 7. And the Bible says in verse 7, every man according as he has purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. All right? And that leads us uh, to our last thought in uh, this study today, because it's emulating uh, God in the chapter 9 of 2 Corinthians, verse 6. The Bible also says in Luke chapter 6 and verse 38, give and it shall be given unto you. So again, the idea of we need to be given is God's a giver, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, we should be givers also. And our attitude to God should be, all I have is his, and I will give God uh, uh, my all and do it cheerfully. And that should be our attitude. We shouldn't do things begrudgingly. You know, that's what I was saying before about being offended. People, the ministry is offended. I'm offended. I'm offended, you know, just life. Now, that's not a way to look at life. It's not healthy. Again, if you're a thinker, you'll have thankfulness. So listen to a few other verses. We'll close. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 27. He that is greedy of gain, trouble his own house. Exodus 20, verse 17. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not... Uh, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So let's look up a couple of verses here. Uh, James, you go to uh, chapter 13 and verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 4. And uh, Craig, would you go to James 3, verse 14 to 16? All right. And then the book of James, uh, chapter 3, verse 14 and 16. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descends not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devil. All right. Thank you so much. So we, we looked at, number one, Paul states his rights. And uh, next Sunday we'll continue uh, with this next week. All right. Let's stand to our feet. And uh, let's ask the Lord to bless the invitation. Father, thank you so much for your goodness to us. And thank you for our church. Thank you, Father, for the cheerful givers we have. And thank you, Lord, for the, the kindness our church has shown myself, my, our family. And I just pray that you bless our church greatly. Help us do your will. And I pray, Father, you'd be pleased uh, in, in our church. And we ask this. In Jesus' name, amen. Heads about.